From Cheaters Surveillance Cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. At this point in time, we have an exact location of where they are. They're by a lake. Oh my God. Dustin, what the f That is Dustin's fiance. Hey, did you know this is my fiance right here? Real reality television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Nikki Schultz is receiving an odd neglect from her man. Unable to put a finger on the problem, Nikki comes to the professionals at Cheaters to get her questions answered. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Since day one, Dustin has joked about, like, since day one that he wanted to marry me, and he knew that I was the one. And now, like, we hardly ever say I love you, and it's, it's very upsetting that we don't have this, this passion that we used to have anymore and I mean, three years has gone by and it's just it's tearing me apart that it's not the the same Dustin. Dustin Walsh, age 22, a stockroom manager suspected of shelving his girlfriend and restocking another relationship. Briefed on the suspect's schedule, Cheaters Intel units surround the suspect's place of employment. After a few hours, investigators spot their mark exiting his work. Walsh walks way down the street to arrive at a restaurant. An unknown woman waits, and he joins her at a table. The two make small talk for a bit. Things seem innocent enough as the pair get up to leave. However, cheaters operators note that all is not what it seems as the suspect holds his companion's hand while they stroll away. He's been very selfish lately, and he doesn't share the car, leaves me at home stranded. He's just been very secretive, and it just makes me wonder, like, what is he really doing, and why does he have to keep me away, and he can't be honest with me? We can't even have any conversations together where he's, he doesn't, he just shuts me out with anything I say. I try to talk to him, and our conversations go nowhere. He gives me short answers, and it's like he doesn't want to talk to me or anything to do with me anymore. Walsh and his mystery lady walk to a garden store. They amble inside and around the business and check out the various items. After a short while, the two leave the store. Walsh lovingly wraps his arm around his femme fatale and escorts the unknown woman to her vehicle. The lady gets in. Walsh shuts the door. As his date drives off, Walsh heads back to work, ending this day of surveillance. We used to be best friends and talk about everything, all our life stories, what we wanted to do as we grow older. And I just, I wanted to be with him forever. And I just don't feel like he's giving me the same love and has the same compassion like he used to. I don't know what's going to go on after I find out if something is going on, and I just, I want answers. Cheaters deploys a squad of detectives to the home Nikki shares with Walsh. Sometime later, the suspect leaves his home. Covertly tailed by a cheater's mobile unit, Walsh drives across town to a bar. Inside the bar, the suspect meets the woman from previous surveillance now identified only as Janine, the illicit pair act overly friendly, touching each other as they converse. A bit later, the suspect and his paramour leave the bar. Janine gives Walsh a quick kiss goodbye before the two walk to their respective vehicles. Cheaters investigators surround the suspect's employment. At the end of his work shift, Walsh gets into his car to leave. Trailed by Cheaters' surveillance team, the suspect drives to a bar. Walsh meets up with Janine in the parking lot, greeting her with kisses and hugs. The two enter the building and grab a table on the crowded patio. Janine strokes Walsh's hair as they enjoy their evening. Finally quitting the bar, Walsh walks his companion hand in hand to her vehicle. 
The suspect passionately kisses Janine goodbye, and the two lovers say goodnight. Cheater's operatives wrap up the case for a despondent Nikki. Coming up, the confrontation. Collating all evidence pointing to infidelity, Cheater summons Nikki to a client review. Courageously, Nikki decides to view the tapes and discovers the truth. Nikki, I just want to say I appreciate you coming out today. I understand that this has kind of been a long week for you. As per your request, we did watch Dustin for quite some time and compiled a lot of evidence. My question for you is, are you prepared to see that? Yes. All right. On this day of our investigation, Nikki, we are outside of Dustin's workplace. Sometime later, Dustin emerges and he walks across the street to a restaurant. That's when we see him meet this woman with the sunglasses on. A while later, she stands up, so does Dustin, and they walk outside holding hands. They then walk over to a store, they go inside, and they begin to look around at various items. We see antiques in there, some lamps, and sometime later we see them emerge and Dustin puts his arm around her. He then walks her over to her vehicle, she gets inside, he shuts the door and sends her on her way. Nikki, on this day of our investigation, as our detectives follow Dustin, he arrives at a bar and meets up with that same female from the day before. We see them converse at the bar. She leans in and kisses him on the cheek, and he smiles. While they're inside, Dustin receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you remember this. Hey. Hey, what's up? Where did you go? Um, I, I'm actually at the bar with uh, Aaron from work. You just took off and didn't even tell me where you're going? Well, I got a quick phone call. I assume that I was just better go. When do you think you're going to be back? I'm just having a quick drink. Okay, well, thanks for telling me. Will you text me when you leave? How much longer do you think you'll be? Uh, probably about another 15, 20 minutes. Okay, well, thanks, I guess. Bye. After finishing up the phone call with you, that girl walks back outside and they embrace with a hug and a pretty long kiss. So Nikki, Dustin obviously has been lying to you about a lot of different things. You've seen that, you know that. At this point in time, we have an exact location where they are. They're by a lake. So if we get in the vans, get rolling on the road, get there as soon as possible, we can confront them. Are you ready to go get the truth from Dustin and find out what's really going on? I'm ready. All right, right this way, please. There's our detective right there. Let's go ahead and stop and see what he's got to say. This is a really big lake, wow. Okay. How's it going, man? Doing well. All right, what so you got? all you guys got to do is take a left right here. All right. Go down to where those two cars are. Okay. Park the vehicles. Everybody needs to get out. Once you get down there, I'll meet you down. All right. And we'll go right in from there. All right, great. All right, thank you. Thanks Appreciate a lot, detective. Let's do our best to be quiet. Watch your step. All right, this way. Come on. I'm working. What is this bull? You're working? I'm just uh, I'm here. Out here by the lake? Um, uh, who's, who's this? this Janine. Hi, what's your name? Um, Janine. Janine, I'm yeah, Clark Gamble with Cheaters. Hey. Uh, the reason why I'm here is because. What is this, is, Dustin? That is Dustin's fiance of three years. Were you aware of that? I had no clue, actually. Wow. Hey, did you know this is my fiance right here? No, I'm sorry, babe. No, that's. What the hell, Dustin? I, 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 Dustin, <laughs> did you lie to this girl and then lie to your fiance? What did he tell you exactly? How did you guys meet? Uh, we work together. You work together? Yeah. Okay. But he never oh. mentioned that he had a girlfriend. Oh. Dick? So you lied, you lied to your fiance and you lied to this coworker of yours. Coming up, the conclusion. At this point in time, we have an exact location of where they are. They're by a lake. Oh my God. Dustin, what the? That is Dustin's fiance. Did you lie to this girl and then lie to your fiance? Why would you do this to people? No, you're well, engaged. I love you. I love you. What is this? No, what is this? You guys spending some time together? What is this? No. You guys are going to restaurants. You guys are going shopping. We I work mean, together. Are you it's, ju me? it's just work. This is bull. No. 
Do you kiss people that just work? No, I didn't mean to do this to you. I'm sorry. You didn't mean to do this. You didn't mean for her to play with your hair and for you to kiss her, for you to lie to me. What? What is this? It's a lot of romance for someone that's a co-worker. We're, we're just, we're, we're really good friends. That's yeah, it. Yeah, really I'm, good friends. What the hell, I, Justin? No, I'm Why didn't you ever mention you had a fiance? What's wrong with you? You're I'm, sick. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm baby. You're pretty sorry. I'm sorry. Pretty sorry you're going to go in the way. Baby, I'm sorry. No, f you. I just want you to know the gravity yeah. of, of what done to not only his fiance and his future but also lying to you as a human being and as a you seem like a very nice girl yeah i get it so you never told her that you had a fiance or anything no i mean you should go clean off your dirty sins in that water man i'd walk a little farther out there maybe how do you feel about yourself right now dustin do you want to apologize maybe to your That's fiance you you're such a dog i'm sorry nikki don't tell your damn family you have I'm, I'm sorry God. i didn't mean to do any of this i didn't mean to that's all you have to say. You didn't mean to do anything, you mean to hurt her. That didn't even start out like this. How did it start out then? We just went around and had a couple drinks, it was a shift. I'm sorry. Do you normally the girls whenever you're into me? Like relationships? You're a liar! Oh. Throwing camera equipment? Drunk Quick at me, dirty. You know, that's expensive stuff, man. That's gonna cost you uh, a pretty penny. A lot more than the dates that you've been taking this girl on. Like, why would you cheat on her? She's, a, like, a lot cooler than you are, apparently. Oh, my God. Sorry, girl. He's, he's nasty. So he's never once said anything to you, no. anyone to work, at work? Not that I know of, at least. God, I'm so sorry. I can't do this. Well, can you talk to your fiancé, then? Maybe. He's Baby. flirty, I guess. Talk to me. I gotta hear everything from you. I need to get your side of the story. Talk to me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for this to go this far. I didn't mean to go out with her. I didn't mean to lie to you. I'm I'm so sorry. So Janine, you need to tell me all about all about this. So he's very flirtatious, acts like he, he's in an open relationship, and he works with you and he yeah, pretty like much uses that. There's nothing to... that he's ever like, pointed to her that he had a Fiance, he doesn't even wear a ring. Do you love me? I do love you. When you love someone, you you tell the truth and you talk to them. If there's a problem, talk to me. <laughs> it didn't mean to happen. I'm sorry. You only understand how bad that hurt me. Seeing those videos and you lying to me on the phone. You're an ass. Go tell him to his face. I mean, I don't think he really takes it seriously. He's groveling, so I guess that's good enough to see. I can't believe it came down to this. I, I just want to go back home. We can talk about it. We can, so, we can make things better. So we're supposed to live our life like this didn't happen? Are we supposed I, to grow from this? Like, laugh at it like 10 years down the road. You remember that one time we were all cheaters? Piece of I, I just, No. I don't know what I can say, babe. No. I didn't. Go. Get out of my face. Dustin, give me my Sit. Hey. Give me that. Um. You stupid. I can't believe you did this. Hey, what do you want to do? This is up to you. What do you want to do? I, I need time. You want to go tell him how you feel and then get out of here? Yeah. All right, where do you go? I'm sorry, girl. I had no idea. Dick. Look out of my face, dude. Get out. Let's go talk to him, give him an ultimatum, and then we'll go. Dustin! Give me your keys. Just give me your keys. What the f***? in your car. Like, hell, I'm going to stay here with you. You're an ass. How can you be Beyonce? You made, like, all those big vows to her. The hell? Babe. I got something for you. I didn't mean it. Can we just go home? Talk Su about it there Su with all these... Cameras? You gave me? Here, take it back. Keep it. I want you to put it around your small little penis and off. Babe. Hey, one other. Dustin, why would you do this to your fiance, man? Like, what was even the point? What was even the point? There's no point. Dumbass dude. Idiot. I know there's better people out there and someone that's not gonna treat me like this, so. Did he give you that ring back? I took it back. Well, if you take him back, that's here. your choice, but you can always pawn the ring and make some money. 
Sounds like a good idea. Following the confrontation, Nikki faces an extreme decision. At the end of the show, Cheaters updates you on the repercussions of her choice. But first, Joseph Tyler comes forward to give his side of the story surrounding the time he was caught red-handed with another man's girlfriend. You know, I was approaching my car, and you know what I'm saying, and me and Dee were walking together. All of a sudden, you know, this mob of people with cameras run out, and there's, uh, you know, there's cameras and lights and boom sticks or whatnot, and it had it just been him, um, we could have talked about the situation like adults. It was definitely the cameras um, more than anything that that was the the most intrusive um, during the, the whole experience. What's going on? What's going on, dude? What the f***? No, no, bro, no. get the f***ing camera no. on your face, dude. What's going on? What are you doing, Desmond? What's going on? Hey, 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 I'm not talking, I'm not talking to you, man. Hey, hey, bro, like, back up off of me, I'm not talking to you, man. What are you doing? No, What's going on? Who the is this, dog? You can call me later. Like, who is this? That's her boyfriend of six years. Her boyfriend? I'm her yeah. I don't know. Uh, I thought you were talking to Hey, bro. Uh, hey, bro. Hey, man. Man, I need your face. But as far as uh, Desmond was concerned, uh, you know, things kind of got heated, but I, I didn't ever figure he was a threat. He was just so small. You know, he was a little guy. He looked like a little little chihuahua just kind of nipping at you or whatever. But, you know, I really didn't take it much past that. Um, I, I think that he's just really delusional about, you know, his relationship and where he sees him and Dee going, um, obviously she doesn't feel that way that he does. Um, and, you know, to hear that they ain't slept together in months or whatnot, what you know, I mean, at least that's what she's telling me. And, you know what I'm saying, he's still in love, but, I mean, you know, if love don't live there no more, you know what I'm saying, you just got to move around, you know what I'm saying? So I was trying to talk to him, you know what I'm saying, man to man, and just tell him, like, you know, it is, it's not what you think it is. Um, and, you know, you just got to kind of deal with that, you know? You don't wear your heart on your sleeve and nothing like that, but you know what I'm saying? You just gotta move on and let that go. Get your hands off me, Doug, man. Bro, you better back up, You dog. better back like, up. Like, you don't even know me like that, little dude. dude. I don't give a f man. Like, dog. Oh, ooh, you, you're a big, you're a big, you big man? You big man? You a big, big man? You better back up off me, man. Bro, back off me, dog. Like, you don't even know me like that, son. Man, you. You don't know me. Oh, uh, you know me and D are cool right now. Uh, you know, cur currently, you know, we, we're seeing each other. I still keep my eyes open, you know, I ain't never blind or nothing. Um, I think that everybody must do that in their relationship, you know? Keep your eyes open for, for signs and stuff like that. But, you know, make sure you make yourself happy. And, uh, you can definitely make the other person happy, so. And, you know, I think people fall out of love all the time. Um, and sometimes that's just the way it is, uh, you know? Sometimes, you know, the love is gone. And, uh, you know, you can love somebody for an instant or a lifetime sometimes. But, you know, it's a flip of a coin sometimes on how long that lasts, you know? Following the confrontation, Nikki Schultz makes the hardest decision of her life. She moves out of the home she once happily shared with the suspect. Nikki claims as much as it hurt at the time, she realizes that she could not look herself in the mirror if she forgave the suspect. For his part in the affair, the suspect, Dustin Walsh, admits to Cheaters producers that he broke Nikki's heart. The suspect says that he won't be making the same mistake anytime soon. The suspect's companion, Janine, declines to remark to Cheaters about her role in the love triangle. Don't get your programming from Goldstein's. Why, we'll both lose money. From Cheaters Surveillance Cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. Go, 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 go. <laughs> what are you doing? You are my friend. You're not here. I don't care about you. You got me. Oh, you stop me. Real Reality Television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Fueled by neglect, Jess Allen recognizes something humorless goes on with her boyfriend. Taking a resolute stance, Jess comes to the experts in fidelity for answers to her questions. I'm Clark Gable, 
and this is Cheaters. Well, he's been a little bit more distant lately. Like, um, I just feel like he just wants to be all business with me. Like, maybe he's just around still for stage time, um, you know, using this as a vessel to further his comedy career, but he's kind of washed up. I, he's, you know, I've been out a lot and he's been passive aggressive toward me a lot. Um, yeah, he's not taking me out. He's not, you know, um, being affectionate toward me. It's, you know, something's going on. Dave Beckers, age 45, a part-time comic suspected of turning his relationship into a bad joke. Cheaters deploys a squad to stake out the home Jess shares with the suspect. Just after sundown, Beggars and Jess leave the residence, followed tightly by a Cheaters mobile unit. The client and her boyfriend drive across town to a comedy club. The pair enter the building. Inside, Beggars bellies up to the bar as Jess talks to a few people in the lobby. While Jess grabs a table for them, the suspect stays at the bar. An unknown female, the bartender, walks over to the suspect's spot and begins chatting with him. Well, I hear a lot of rumors when I'm out of town that Dave's talking to other girls around the comedy clubs, and, you know, I don't want to jump to conclusions and believe them. I know people could be petty, especially when it comes to other people becoming successful. And um, when I come back home from being on the road, I try my best to connect with him, you know, to catch up, go out, have fun. But he doesn't want to do that. He always tells me, oh, well, you seem tired, so I'm going to go off and do my own thing. And he doesn't say where he's going. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to fight with him. I just want to, I just want to catch up and, you know, and, you know, nurture our relationship further. And he's just, he's up to something. Dave continues to smooze with the pretty barmaid for a short while. And after a few moments, the unknown female steps out from behind the bar and Beggars follows her outside. On the patio, the suspect and his sexy bartender continue the conversation. Beggars plays with a woman's hair as they talk. Finally, the bartender finishes her cigarette. Jess then arrives, interrupting the conversation. Snagging her guy, Jess and Beggars finally leave. We have spent five years together. We used to be each other's number one fans. We used to really support each other. And, you know, sometimes he's still sweet to me. It happens very, very far in between periods of arguing. But sometimes he tells me, I'm great, I love you. And that just makes me think, well, what, what did you do? Like, why are you trying to finesse me like this? And it's just, it's not the Dave that I, you know, built my life with for these last few years. No, if Dave's cheating on me, I am not forgiving him. He is out, I am throwing all of his stuff to the street, and I will never let him work in the clubs with me again. Cheaters detectives keep vigil over Jess and the suspect's residence. Sometime later, agents spot beggars as he leaves home. A mobile unit tails him across town to a strip mall parking lot. Beggars gets out and waits a few minutes. Shortly, the pretty bartender from previous surveillance, now identified only as Stormy, arrives in her SUV. Beggars takes Stormy's purse, pops the trunk of his own vehicle, and retrieves what can only be described as an art piece. The unlikely duo stroll to a nearby restaurant for a quick bite. On the patio, Beggars romantically feeds his lunch day the bite of his own dish. A short while later, having finished their repast, Beggars and Stormy walk around the area to an art house. A few minutes later, the pair leave the art house without Beggars' art piece. The suspect returns his companion to her vehicle and leaves, ending this day of surveillance. With intel from Jess that she left town on business, Cheater's agents stick to the game plan of staking out the residence. After dark, operatives watch as Beggars exits. The trailing cheater squad notes the suspect takes the known path to the comedy club. Beggars enters the building, and guess who he meets? Stormy, of course. They converse at a table for a bit before entering the stage area. Once inside, Beggars commences to do his stand-up routine in front of an almost empty room. After his bit finishes, Beggars and Stormy leave the club. The suspect and his hot date traips back to his parked car. The lovers get into the vehicle and take the familiar route back to his residence. Beggars escort Stormy into the dwelling he shares with Jess. 
Footage provided by one of two interior cameras placed by Jess shows the impious sweethearts sharing an impetuous kiss. Stormy steps into another room as the suspect sits down. When the young hottie returns, she obviously has an interesting evening plan, being that she's stripped down to a thong and carries a pair of handcuffs. Stormy climbs into the suspect's lap for a few minutes, and eventually Stormy leads beggars to the kitchen area. The bartender handcuffs the suspect to a beam supporting the kitchen ceiling. With beggars hanging by his arms, Stormy proceeds to kiss and fondle him. However, the joke lies on the suspect as Cheaters ties up the case for a betrayed Jess. Coming up, The Confrontation. With all evidence pointing to infidelity firmly established, Cheaters requests a meeting with Jess to examine the sorrowful information. Summoning all her stoic courage, Jess determines to learn the truth. Jess, first thing I'd like to say is um, thank you for coming out this evening. I understand that you've been going through a lot. As you know, we have conducted our investigation, Jess. My question for you is, are you prepared to see the evidence that we have come up with? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Jess, we begin our investigation outside of your residence. We see Dave emerge. He walks over to his vehicle and he gets inside. He has something in his hand. Not really sure what that was, but it looked like a form of some sculpture. Yeah, he does this weird thing with dolls. Okay. Well, he leaves and then he arrives at a parking lot. We see him get out of his vehicle. He closes the door. Uh -huh. A few moments later, that blonde girl pulls up uh -huh. and we see Dave go to the back of his trunk and pull out that doll sculpture. And they walk away together. That's when we see them go across the way and they arrive at a restaurant. Dave opens up the door for her, they walk inside, sit at the outdoor patio and share a meal. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize her? Yeah, that's Stormy. That's Stormy? Yeah. Does this seem strange to you at this point? No, we, we are with, we're all friends. Okay. It's, you know. After finishing up their meal, they return to that parking lot. That's when we see Dave say goodbye to Stormy. He gets into his vehicle and he leaves. On this day, as our detectives follow Dave, he arrives at the comedy club. Okay. He parks gets out of his vehicle, and he walks inside. That's when we see him okay. go sit out on the patio with Stormy. We then see Dave doing his bit up on the stage while Stormy watches. After he finishes up, she hands him the keys to his car. Mm -hmm. They walk out together, and mm -hmm. they leave together. As our detectives follow Dave, he then arrives back at your residence. Mm -hmm. We see the two of them walk inside holding hands, and that's when he points out his sculpture of doll collections Whoa. and she lays a kiss they on just Dave. Kiss? They did. Dave then proceeds to sit on the chair. Whoa. She goes into the bathroom, comes out completely topless with her underwear on only. Oh my gosh. And a pair of handcuffs. That's my friend. This That's is, my chair. You recall that surveillance equipment that we installed in your house when we began this oh, whole yeah, process? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, uh -huh. we had a hidden audio conversation we picked up and uh -huh. that's what you're about to listen to. I could just strangle her right now. And I completely like, understand that. Like we have, this is five years of my life with my friend. Like I'm, I feel like I'm gonna be sick. After finishing yeah. up that little conversation, Dave stands up, Stormy takes him over to the rafter in the house, handcuffs him, begins to make out with him, begins to kiss him multiple times. Whoa. And you could only imagine what else happens. Jess, I think you've seen enough. At this point in time, why don't we get in the vans and get on the road? We can get to that comedy club. They're there together. Are you ready to bust, Dave? I'm ready to bust, Dave. Mm -hmm. All right. Both of them. Right this way, please. Let's do this. Excuse us. Go, 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 go. Oh, 
Coming up, the conclusion. We can get to that comedy club. They're there together. <laughs> what are you doing? You are my friend. I don't care about you. You slap me on the camera. Are you tapping at me? Sorry, mean anything? Yeah, bitch, I know. You guys happy? Yeah. Everything? Awesome? Are you slapping the out of me? You got her on stage? How dare you me? talk to me like that? How dare you go up and talk to me I like that? You, Who do you think you, you are? You slapped the out of what me! What is this? You're How do you little... slap the out of me? Of course I did. Look at you buying this little freaking Mustang like a Frisco mom. Oh my, oh my gosh, that wasn't enough for your midlife crisis? You had to go pretty much your daughter? That's disgusting. Kim, her, both of them. Dave, I think, you, I think okay. you need to take a deep breath and relax. All right, listen, you guys had a great relationship and then something went wrong. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she's gone a lot. I understand that. Why wouldn't you just communicate that to her in the first place and just say, hey, listen, sweetie, you're gone so much. Did you not see how she reacted? Did you not see how she reacted? Okay, she beat the out of me in front of the cameras. If I would have told her any of that would have happened, she would have beat the out of me then. Dude, you got some so issues, either. man. You got some anger issues. Why does she seriously. have it? Well, because she's angry because you cheated on her. I mean, yes. I could show you if you want to see it again. I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. I'm and you made her one of your doll yeah, sculptures? No. That looked pretty near and dear. You yeah, made... you're 40 playing with dolls. That's, okay. that's There we go. There we go. That's great. awesome. Yeah. Do you think that's it would have awesome. been a better idea to maybe get like a sex doll to play with instead of a real one? Dave, you two were spending a lot of time I, together. I, no, I was there. That's me. I no, you don't have to show me, okay? But why did you do that? Why did I do it? Yeah. Because she's hot, okay? And she's gone. That's why I did it. What would you do? Look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. It's beautiful. And this is gone all the time. You know, don't, I would be honest with away. my artistic girlfriend and tell her how I truly feel instead of lying and cheating on her. Thank you. Well, guess what? It's done, okay? It's over. It's done. So It's over now that you've screwed up. Yeah, it's over, now that she beat, it's over now that she beat the out of me, so it's over. Your so face is happy. bleeding, and I can't happy. even recognize yeah, yeah, you, yeah, Dave. Uh -huh, it's so uh -huh. terrible. I can't wait to go to the cops. It's going to be awesome. Really, Dave, that's all you have to say instead of apologizing? What else do you want me to say? Apologize. What? No, I'm going to apologize. She beat the out of me. What the am I going to say to her? Hit me again. you. I would say sorry. What do you want to do? This still to me up to you. Do you feel like you've gotten what you needed? Um. Yeah, I've gotten what I needed. Mm-hmm. Dot com. Completely disgusted by her boyfriend's atrocious behavior, Jess realizes she has a difficult decision to make. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals her plan for the future. But now, Cheaters welcomes Sarah Reed. Sarah comes forward to clear up how her relationship with her husband's best friend was unveiled on Cheaters. When we were caught, I was definitely embarrassed. Uh, not only in my actions, but just the confrontation in itself was just, it was in a public place, so it was kind of embarrassing having so many people staring at us and sort of knowing what we did. 
without knowing the backstory behind it. What are you doing, man? Oh, okay, calm down. My wife's here. You're with my wife, yeah? We're just, just having a pie. Just having a pie, having a couple of beers. Is it nice? Is it nice? Is it nice? Yeah. Is it? Why would you do this to your best friend? Why would you do this to your husband? What are you doing? Simon, what are you doing? Having a beer, having some pie. Like. Why would you do this to your friend, Chris? What, you to, what did I do? What did I do? Oh, I we haven't done anything. We're, eating, we're literally eating pie. We haven't I've done anything. I've seen your videos. Now. I've seen what you've been up to. There's what? no videos. I've there's seen there's videos. no videos. Simon, there's I've no videos. It. When I started seeing Chris, it really was not intentional, um, I, the, the act of cheating. It just kind of slowly progressed. He came to stay with Simon and I, and we ended up at first just hanging out as friends, and then kind of one thing led to another, and it progressed and progressed. And um, then we ended up getting together. Um, I, we knew it was wrong at the time, but just because Simon and Chris had been friends for so long, and Chris, Simon and I were married, it just made for a really sort of bizarre love triangle. Took my heart, you sliced it open, you shoved up my ass and me. That's how bad it is. Like, don't come home, find a way home, yourself, go yourself, Simon. peace out. F you guys. F you. F you. You know what? F you. F you, man. Yeah. What's up? Stop, 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 stop. 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 <laughs> the relationship with Chris um, has actually gone beyond my expectations. And now that I'm divorced, we actually are together. And we are actually planning on getting married ourselves in, within the next year or so. We just kind of realized that we're more compatible. Um, we're, we're into the same things, the same music. We both are very social and we enjoy um, spending time with each other. Following the confrontation, Jess Allen realizes her comedy partner deserves to be left alone. Jess has also broken off the friendship she once had with the suspect's companion. For his part in the whole ordeal, Dave Beggars refuses to take any responsibility. When questioned by Cheater's producers, the suspect claims, I can't believe she'd further her career by ruining mine the way she did. Jess didn't have to pull all this out in the open. Made me look like an ass in my own hangout. I can't even go back in there without getting laughed off stage. The suspect's companion, Stormy, did not wish to comment to cheaters on her involvement. If you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money. From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheater's. This is his girlfriend of two years. Yeah, bitch, oh yeah. This is what you looking for, bitch. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Katrina Anderson smells trouble and calls on Cheaters for help to determine what or who her gambler boyfriend does in his off time. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. In the beginning, our relationship was like A1, me and Money were like best friends. He always came home. I never had to worry about him being out too late. He made sure he gave me a call. You know, he cooked, clean, bring me gifts. But all of a sudden, things have changed. Like, slowly but surely, it just changed. And like, out of nowhere, it's like, he's a, str he's a stranger. Like, I don't even know who he is now. I mean, he just not the money I knew. Money, age 30. A professional gambler accused of bluffing his way through his relationship. Cheater's elements converge on the home Katrina shares with the suspect. Sometime later, an unknown vehicle arrives. The suspect, otherwise known as Money, emerges from the house with a purse slung over his shoulders. Money gets into the sedan and, shadowed by the cheater's team, the suspect and his ride drive to a restaurant. <laughs> 
But he has this best friend that he always hangs out with. For some strange reason, I never met him. But I mean, quote unquote, he's with them all the time. They hustle together, they gamble on the games. Like, when it's time to meet him, you know, he always be cool. Well, yeah, you gonna meet kids today, baby. But it's like he bring them around while I'm at work. Like, why he can't come to the shop? I do her. I mean, it's open door, you can come in. But no, I never met him. But that's, he's always with Ken, you know, his best friend, quote unquote. We had a great understanding. He was always coming home. He always checked on me. He brought me flowers, ran me bath water, had rose petals, cooked food clean house, like, he was always bringing me gifts here and there. Now, I barely even see him. And I could call him, it's a problem. He's always gambling, like, he's never there. He don't even give me a hug. I mean, we ain't passing with each other, like, I'm always out, he's in, I'm in, he's out. The pastel-wearing boys eat lunch together. Surprising cheaters investigators, Money slides his arm through his man friend's arm as they saunter back to the unknown male's car. The two men get into the car for a drive back to Money's pad. Upon arrival, the suspect gets out of the car and walks into his home, ending that day of surveillance. If I find out Money's cheating on me, I don't know what my reaction's gonna be. It's, I mean, I know for a fact it might be just real ugly. Like, I have no tolerance. I have zero tolerance to foolishness and dumb. Dumbfounded people, like, I, I just don't know what I do. Like, I'm gonna be hurt for one. I just hope y'all don't find nothing, like, that he's doing something. I hope he's with his best friend and not cheating. Like, I mean, it's gonna be real ugly. It's gonna hurt me. Cheaters detectives continue the stakeout. The same vehicle driven by the suspect's buddy arrives. With a different purse on his arm, money sachets out to the car, and away they go. A cheater's mobile unit covertly tails the vehicle to a bar. The two go inside, and seated inside, money and his boyfriend, now identified as Ken Cartwright, enjoy some quality time together as they sip their cocktails. After some time, the two men leave. Money pauses at the car to get some man love. Cartwright hugs and fondles money by the car. The suspect and his manpanion return to Money's home, ending the day with Katrina none the wiser. Keeping account of the suspect's routines, Cheater stays glued to the stakeout. After a while, Cartwright pulls up. With his purse in hand, Money gets in. The lovers travel across town to a bar. Upon finding a table on the patio, a half-dressed Money and his beau scoot the chairs closer to each other. After a bit of time, Money leans close and wraps his arms around Cartwright for some cuddling. A bit later, Cartwright leads the suspect back to his car. The men travel through the neighborhood to the suspect's domicile. Money goes inside, ostensibly checking to see if Katrina might be home. After a quick check, the suspect returns to Cartwright's car. Money, quite certain his secrets remain, walks his companion into the house. Later, as a disheveled, half-dressed Cartwright leaves, Cheaters prepares to rake money over the coals for an unsuspecting Katrina. Coming up, the confrontation. With all suspicions confirmed, Cheaters convenes with Katrina to expose the suspect's secret activities. Despite all her fears coming true, Katrina prepares for the reality of her circumstances. Katrina, you came to us for a few certain reasons this evening, and I just wanted to elaborate on those. Tell me a little bit about what's been going on with you and your boyfriend, Money. From what I understand, you guys have been together for two years, you share a home, mm -hmm. and there's been some strange things going on. Can you elaborate? Yes, now me and Money, we've been together two years. The first couple of years, you know, the first year was okay. But as we got off into the relationship, like a lot of things started changing. So are you ready to see what you've come up with? Might as well. All right. So Katrina, we begin our investigation outside of your residence. Look mm -hmm. familiar? Mm-hmm. Okay, a few moments later, this silver vehicle pulls up, stops right in front of the house. That's when we see Money 
That is money, correct? Mm -hmm. You see money get into the vehicle. As they drive, they arrive at a restaurant and a male steps out of the vehicle. I'll stop it right there. Do you recognize him, that guy in the blue shirt? Not really. Not really? Are there, is there anyone from his work that he would normally his go best, out to yeah, lunch with? He always be with his best friend. That might, yeah, he's kind of fat a little, yeah. What's his best friend's name? Kenny or Ken or something. So this like could that. possibly be Kenny or Ken? Yeah. All right, well, continuing on, they go into this restaurant and they sit down at a table. Then when they leave, they're arm in arm with each other. What the f is that? They return to the vehicle. We see that male get into the driver's side and he gets the passenger side. They leave the restaurant. That gentleman drops him off the house and he walks inside. One thing if two guys go out and get a bite, but why were they holding, you know, what arm in arm? So close. Like what the f is that about? Yeah, well, that's what we're gonna find out. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> oh my god. Continuing on with our investigation, Katrina, on this day we are outside of your residence. A few moments later, we see that same silver vehicle pull up. That's when we see money come out. He gets into the passenger side of the vehicle and they drive. They arrive at a bar, the two of them get out, and we see, that's a purse. We see them walk into a bar, <laughs> they sit down and they hold hands at the table. They leave, they go out to the parking lot, and that's when we see him hugging this man. Oh Lord, no. And before I let you turn around, they also do that. He gets back into the vehicle with this gentleman and they leave the bar parking lot. He then drops money off at the house and he walks inside. So this is getting completely strange. Katrina, on this day of our investigation, we see money in the house wearing no shirt with a purse. He gets into that same silver vehicle and they leave. They arrive at a bar. That's when we see money get out. That same gentleman, they go inside. And during this meal, money receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you can remember this day, let alone this conversation. After finishing up that phone call completely lying to you, he embraces with this gentleman. Now you see his face, eyebrow piercing. Does that look like Ken or Kenny? This is best friend, supposedly. The two of them get up together, they leave the bar, they return to the residence, that's when we see money get out. He goes into the residence, comes back outside, and brings this man inside with him. Hell no. A few moments pass, and a while later, that gentleman emerges with no shirt on, walks out of your home. He gets into the vehicle, and he leaves. Man, where is he? This where is what is I want to do. At this point in time, I think you've seen enough. Why don't we go ahead, get on the road. We know exactly where they're at. Money actually went and picked that gentleman up and took him to a restaurant that's nearby. Are you ready to go confront these two? Mm-hmm. All right, right this way. Let's go find him. What is it? Right there, sitting right next to the entrance. Right there, right here at this table. What the f is out doing? So what the Coming up next, the conclusion. Man, where is he? Money actually went and picked that gentleman up. What the f is out doing? What the f is you doing up here with this dude? Hey, what the f is you doing? Money, who, 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 man, what's your man? What's your man? What's your man? Bitch, tell him who I am. Tell him who I am. Chill, bro. Grab her, grab her, grab her. What is bitch? What? Who is this? This is his girlfriend of two years that he lives with. Really? Did you know that? Really, money? Don't touch the camera, whole boy. So I got a question for you. Uh, you're nice tripping, bro. Money, where are you going? Oh, no, y'all hugged up now, bitch. Money, where are you going? Bitch, don't walk out now. Man, y'all tripping. Bitch. Bitch, you want a hoe? You want a bitch, bro? You want a Get away from the car. Chill, man. Where we go, bitch? Bitch, where we go? It's clear, bro. Bitch, you ain't got nothing. This hoe. You wanna be like me, bitch? This what you want? And what's your name? Ken. So Ken, why uh, why would you do this to, you know? I didn't know he had nobody. Bitch, what you mean? You don't know. I didn't know he had nobody. I didn't know he had. What you mean? You didn't know he had nobody? Uh-uh. Get away from the cars. So you had no idea. Where are they going? Oh, y'all running now. 
Y'all hoes running now, huh? What is bitch at? You said he had no idea. They're running down that way. They're running away. Bring the vans over. Come on. Let's go. So you hoes gonna run. Just like some pussies. I got more nuts than y'all. Man, stop following me with these cameras, bro. For real, man. Hey, what's up with this? I don't know, bro. They tripping me. Where you going, man? What's up? Dude. I just have what, a couple man, questions for you. Why me with their cameras for, for what word? What's because going on? Because your my... girlfriend hired us. Man, they always running like that. Are you serious, bitch? Y'all running? My name's Ken, you said, right? Yeah, it's my name is Ken. All right, so Money, can you tell me a little about what happened, man? Are you man? serious? Man, what happened? I, man, leave me alone, man. Are you bro, serious? I don't, man. So yeah, yeah, man, y'all better get her, you. man, for real. What's up, man? You can never be me, bitch. You can never be me. This is my homeboy. What is she talking about, man? You talking about Rob about me like that, man? What you mean? We weren't even hugged up. We just sitting there What you mean? Y'all hugged up, bro. bitch. Don't run up you on me, bro. You got what you gonna do. She's talking about. Man, y'all better get up, man. What's Stop running up. What's your time about? Yeah. What's your time about? Tell me your side of the story. Can I just talk to you for a minute over here? What exactly happened? What's mean? What happened? I've seen everything. She hired us. We've been following you guys for some time now, and I've seen you guys go out for lunch. Okay, I've what seen, that mean? We're going out for lunch. Seen you guys, you know, What's get a little closer to each other. Bitch, limp ass hoe. Stop following me, man. Yeah. yeah, you like that, Man, stop following yeah, me, bro. Yeah, I need to give you some, bitch. I'm gonna give you these tens Man, head, stop ho. following me, man. I'm yeah. cameras, bro, for real. Yeah, bitch, I'm gonna give you these tens, ho. You want a bitch, I'm gonna give you one right here. Stop following me, man. Yeah. Man, move, for real, yeah, man. Yeah, don't move now, bitch. I mean, do normal friends that our guy friends kiss each other when they go to lunch? Y'all ain't, ain't saw us kiss because we ain't kissed. Really? I'm you sure about saying, that? Yeah. You gonna keep lying to me? Yeah, I'm lying about what? I ain't gotta lie about nothing. Yeah. Man, move for real, bro. That's how I move. Yeah, I need to get paid, bitch. Y'all think y'all gonna do this? Don't pay me. I got you guys on videotape. I've had people. You ain't got us. Let me see. Like, you wanna see it? Something. Yeah, Where's bitch. It? Yeah. Where's the iPad? This at? what you looking for, bitch. Nah, I don't want this that. what you looking for, how? I don't want that. That's yes, what you looking for. I don't want that. Yeah. I, don't want I know. Man, chill, bro. Me. Bro, man. What you talking to, bitch. What you talking about? I know it. Man, I don't even wanna yeah. talk about my money. I know it. Quit running, bitch. You better follow me, fuck. Because, bitch, are you going to do something, ho? Hey. You ain't got nothing. Nothing? No, oh, you ain't got nothing. So you're not, you're, are you going to keep lying to me? What's this? I don't know what that is. That's not you? OK, what that, okay, yeah. what that mean? Why are you squeezing on his butt cheeks? Homeboy. The homeboy? Yeah, that's a homeboy. So what you talking about? Come on, man. Let's go, man. Stop talking to me. Yeah, where his bitch at? Where his bitch at? Come on, man. Where his bitch? Man, move. Move, get out of my way, man. Bitch, I'll spit on you, hoes. Yeah, Open the door, bitch. Open the door, ho. Yeah, you bitches, some hoes, ho. Yeah. I'ma look at that. I'ma look at that. I know it. Hey, pussy. let's get you out of here. They're calling the police right okay, now. Come on, let's go. You. Everyone, load up. I had no opportunity to get anything from the two of them. I even tried to talk to that guy. His name is Ken. That is his friend. And he said that... The best friend. That, yeah, he said that he completely <laughs> lied and yeah. had no idea that you existed. And then he completely lied to me, said they weren't doing anything. I had to show him our evidence, and he still like, come on, of course they're not going to admit it because they pussies. What's next for you, Katrina? Oh, I'm moving out. Like, he's kicked to the curb like a bear. He's like some trash garbage. That's what he is, garbage. I take that out every day. Following the chaos of the confrontation, Katrina tries to wrap her mind around her boyfriend's sexual proclivities. Later, Cheaters explains her mindset. For now, Tegan discusses what life has been like since the night she was caught horsing around on Cheaters. Mike and I met on an app called Tinder, and I guess it's like a hookup app. And so from there, we just kind of met in a few public places and hung out a few times. He never really said he had a girlfriend. I mean, I kind of assumed just because of the phone calls I heard him take. But I mean, I didn't really care. We were just hooking up, not like we were in a relationship or anything. What the f What the f Are you, are you kidding me? What are you kidding me? What the f are you kidding me? What the f are you What kind of whore are you? Mike, what the f is this? Mike. Who the f are you? What the f are you? All these people are everywhere. Are you is that kidding me right now? What the f Who the f are you? Let me matter what the f all these people everywhere who the f oh, what the f is you this 
Well, it would have been nice if he would have told me that he did have a girlfriend so we could have met more discreetly. It was pretty awkward not having clothes on and knowing that there was cameras in my face. But um, he immediately started calling me after he and his girlfriend went their separate ways. And I mean, I just didn't take his call for a couple of days. And then he explained to me everything that happened and I just kind of let it be. And then we started seeing each other again. What the f are you doing, bitch? What the f Oh my God. Who the hell is she? What does it what even the matter? Slut? What does Such it even mind? matter? What the f she is. is. Okay. Oh my God. If you would just do something besides like maybe just lay there like a pillow princess, what does it matter? Are you? What the is it? What is it? Okay, Mike, who are all y'all? What this the is no. in the This is cheaters. The reason why we're here is because she, she, she called us because she thought you were cheating. Cheaters, on cheaters. And that's obviously yeah, you're a cheater. So wait, so you called them so I can be at work late every other I night. Work late. Working on, I actually am working. Me and Mike both agree that we have a very strong mutual attraction. So we still see each other from time to time, and it's a mutual agreement, and that's really all. At this point, I mean, I'm really not looking for a relationship. I'm not looking to be with just one person. I work full time and I go to school full time. So those are my main focuses. And uh, I just kind of let it be. Disgusted by the deceitful dealings of her boyfriend and his BFF, Katrina moves out immediately following the revelations of the confrontation. The suspect, Money, declares to Cheater's producers that he and his companion keep a strictly platonic relationship. Money claims he can't be gay if he likes women, too. The suspect's companion, Ken Cartwright, takes a different tack when questioned by Cheater's officials. Cartwright claims he still sees the suspect on a regular basis. If you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why will both lose money? From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. I really apologize, Jennifer. We have eyes on him. Is that a local bar? What the f are you doing? I thought you said you were changed. What the, what the hell? hell? What are you doing? I wish I could afford Dr. Drew and get help for sex edition. Real reality television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Reveling in her boyfriend's proposal of marriage thrills Jennifer Denis. However, Jennifer notices a few red flags which cause her to question her boyfriend's sincerity. Jennifer comes to Cheaters seeking answers to her questions. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. When Matt proposed to me, we were at, at our home and I, I was cleaning up dinner and he came in the kitchen and he said, baby, I need to talk to you. He told me, I want you to be my wife. I only want to be with you. Even though we haven't said we're boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, you know I'm your boyfriend and I know you're my girlfriend. We're together and I want to be with you forever. It made me feel really good that he was, he was ready to put that commitment into it. You know, I, he was just, like I said, always so into me. It was amazing. Matt McGraw, age 35, an EMT suspected of playing doctor with another woman. Brief that Jennifer was working out of town this week, Cheaters deploys a squad of investigators to the apartment Jennifer shares with a suspect. After some time, Cheaters agents spot their mark, Matt McGraw, heading to his car. The suspect climbs in and drives away. Unaware of his cheater's shadow, McGraw jaunts uptown to an area known for restaurants. He pulls into a parking spot and heads inside. Matt used to make me feel safe. Um, I felt like I was the only one that he wasn't fooling around on me. He wasn't seeing anybody else, and I felt really secure with our relationship. But recently, I just I don't have that feeling anymore. I can just feel it that while I'm not there, that something's going on. He won't answer his phone sometimes. When I'm home, he takes his phone in the bathroom with him, which is just, I don't understand it. It's, it's always locked and 
I worked for a residential leasing company and I was chosen to go into a corporate management training. Um, one week out of the month I have to go out of town for training and learning the different aspects of the job and I mean it's only going to be for a couple months but every time I come back I just don't, it doesn't feel right. The house doesn't feel the same, stuff just seems different. I'll notice pictures aren't in the same places, they've been moved around. It's, something's not right, I mean the bedroom will have stuff moved around and I can just tell something's been going on. Somebody else has been in my house. Inside, the suspect sips a cup of coffee quietly. After a short while, the cheater's tail sees McGraw making friendly conversation with a strange woman. As she leaves, another unknown woman walks up and greets the suspect. McGraw converses with the unknown lady. The pretty woman hugs the suspect and pinches his cheek. McGraw escorts the young female to her car and then leaves for the night. I don't know what I would do if I found out he was cheating on me. I love him so much and he told me I made him a better person and he was a changed man and that he would never do anything like that to hurt me. I, I really don't know what would ha what I would do or what he could say to even make it better. I mean, it just it's devastating to think that I might have done something to make him pull away from me and what, you know, if, He's a changed man, and it was because of me, and now something's changed. Is it, what did I do? Cheaters detectives keep watch over Jennifer and McGraw's home. The suspect leaves, driving out of the parking garage. Followed by a cheater's recon team, the suspect once again drives uptown to a restaurant. McGraw grabs a table, spending a few minutes diddling with his phone. The suspect speaks to a pair of women at the table next to him. After some time, yet another mysterious woman, whose identity remains unknown, enters and greets the suspect with a passionate hug. The pair sit cozily in the corner. All pretenses of innocence get discarded to cheaters' investigators, as revealed in this recorded phone call. Hello? Hey, baby, what are you doing? Uh, just ordering a, a pizza. Okay, well, I just got here. You, they're alone? Yeah, yeah. You sure you're, you're, you're not doing anything or going anywhere? No, 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 no. I gotta get up early for that, that early shift. Okay, well, when can I get a call to you and call you again? Uh, give me a call uh, tomorrow when I get off at 6 o'clock. All right, honey. Then I'll let you go ahead and go to bed, honey. I love you. Okay, love you too. Bye, baby. Bye-bye. After a while, the suspect and his dinner date leave the restaurant. McGraw kisses his mysterious mall as they walk down the avenue. The pair walk into the parking garage. The cheater's detective momentarily loses the deceptive duo and then catches up with McGraw alone in his vehicle. The suspect heads home to the empty apartment he shares with Jennifer. Cheater's agents continue to work the stakeout of McGraw and Jennifer's house. This evening, the suspect, following his usual routine, leaves the apartment. McGraw goes to his usual sports bar. Inside, he flits around acting the social butterfly. McGraw spends some time flirting with various women. Later, the suspect leaves with another unknown female. He walks his latest conquest back to his empty apartment. Interior cameras capture the sordid scene. The suspect and his concubine begin to kiss. McGraw and the young lady quickly strip down and begin to get down. The suspect changes things up when things begin to heat up. The couple spend quality time on the couch for quite a while. Feeling like the king of the world, McGraw lets loose with an arm flex that would do Mr. Olympia proud. Finally finished with their sexual activity, the suspect and his date sit for a while, smoking and watching television. After a while, the female gets dressed. As his paramour leaves, the suspect climbs into his empty bed that he normally shares with a disenfranchised Jennifer. Coming up, The Confrontation. With careful documentation of the suspect's deceptive activities, Cheaters calls on Jennifer to arrange a client briefing. Worn out from concern, Jennifer steals herself for the imminent news. All right, Ms. Jennifer, how are you doing this evening? I know you've driven a long way, I know you're tired, so do you want to just see what I we came up see. with? All right. On this day of investigation, we're outside of the suspect's home. He emerges, walks to his vehicle, and then arrives at a local restaurant. He goes inside, 
And then he begins conversing with this woman. They're seen talking back and forth. A little while later, he exits with that unknown girl and goes back home to your house. To my house? To your house. On this day of investigation, we're outside your house once again. He comes outside, arrives at a bar, and that's when our detective catches him flirting with multiple women. And then he emerges and walks back with this woman. Do you recognize her? No, I don't know that Never, no. never seen River River No. So they get back from the bar, walk up to your house, he gives her a kiss, and they go inside. Now, right after this, we actually put a surveillance camera inside, a hidden one inside of your living room. So this next shot is actually gonna be from inside of your house. Okay. And that's them on the couch. As you can see, it's your living room. Mm -hmm. Start kissing a little bit. And it gets oh very serious. Oh my God, oh my God. And then they're seen sitting on your couch right after the fact. I could actually call the detectives right now and find out exactly where he's at. Do you want to do that? Yes. All right. It's going to be all right. Hey, man, what's up? All right, so they left the bar and they're at a, they're at a, a taco restaurant, from what I, what I understand. All right, we will be there shortly. Thank you. All right. All right, so we have him. We have eyes on him. He's at a local bar. Are you ready to go bust him? Yeah, I want to see him. All right, let's go. Straight up, green shirt. Is that right there in the green shirt? What the f are you doing? I thought you said you were a tank. What the f What the, what the hell, hell are you doing here? What are you doing? So I got a question for you. Do you aware that uh, Matt has a relationship of three years and he's actually cheating on his wife right now with you? No. You have no idea? I'm on a meetup, actually. It's an online thing. I had no idea. What is it? What the f is that? What is this? Who is it? What? You said you were What are you doing here? What the? I can't believe you. What are you doing here? I'm Clark Gable with Cheaters, Hi. and I, I apologize that I met you under this circumstance, but um, what's basically happening is we're actually uh, catching Matt right now, cheating yeah, on his his, his wife with uh, you. Who the f are you? All right. Who the f are you? Do you know who the f I am? No, I don't even she know. She has no idea dude. who you are. I don't even know the dude. How do you not even know him? You're sitting down eating with him, huh? That's what. Beyonce. It was an online thing. Take it up with your man. Not with me, honey. Take it you up. You met with him your man. online. Yes. Coming up, the conclusion. On the patio, I'll lead you in. He's wearing a green shirt. What the f are you doing? I thought you said you were changed. What? What the f that's not Beyonce. It was an online thing. From what I understand, you're here, you've got your wife for three years, and then you, you get a, you must have cheated on her? What? What is no, this honestly, though, man, like, what is, uh, what, what's your whole, what's your whole travel We're just hanging out. We're just hanging out. Online. Hanging out. Online? Fair enough. So, what's, uh, I want to hear both sides of your story. Oh, my God. I'm out now. We conducted surveillance out in front of your house. She hired us. She's seen all, she's seen pretty really? much everything that you've been doing the last yeah, few weeks. Yeah, so I've seen it. Here, let's get, hired, you to, let's get you to, let's go out this way, come on. You hired a surveillance team? Are you kidding me? Kidding? You were another girl in our apartment on my couch! My in my house! Brothers. We only went out twice. So regardless Two times. of the fact that you still cheated What does that matter? Okay. We only went out twice. We only went out twice. You were another bitch in my house. Your house? My pay for it too. I pay for Really? It. Where are you going? Huh? Go going home. Run away? Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Huh? What are you gonna do? Going home. It's my you house. Ain't going to house no, you ain't going to the house. It's my it. house. My house. I pay more in that house than you really? do. Bring some bitch I in there. Her on my couch. On my couch. Hey, get out of here. Come on. Just come Get out of my face. No! Get, You're not going anywhere. Going You're not home. going anywhere. Going home. Why did you ask me to marry you? Why did you ask me to marry you? I'm sorry. If you want to f other women, why are you asking I, me to marry you? We're just hanging out. We're just friends. Bull Come on. You know how I am. I thought you were okay with it. We have all those threesomes. The threesomes is all three of I'm there. I'm there. Jesus. Bring in some other bitch in the house and f her on my couch and on my bed? I don't know what you're talking about. That ain't about. a threesome. That's your f***ing 
around on me and you told me it was only me. Bullshit, it's on camera. They got you some I'll, bitch I'll, in our I'll house. I want to see it. I see it. What are you talking? I don't know. What, I have no idea what you're talking about. Hey, get on the street. I'll show you. You want to see what the they got on you? You want to see? Yeah. Get away from me. Get away from me. Here, Matt, you want to see that surveillance? Yeah, yeah. Right here, man. Do you even love me? Do you even love me anymore? I mean, what? What happened? Why? Do you recall this night? <sighs> to you the camera this, in the house? The yeah, I had a camera in the house. What? Wow. Wow, yeah. Busted. I'm sure you want me to pay So this for is that. both of your guys' house from what I understand. You guys share this house and you brought yeah. this woman in when she was not home? When I was out of town work. I was working. You know, she drove three hours to get here, man. And you're having intercourse with a totally different chick. He got me. He got me. How do you feel about this right now? <sighs> Why did you do this? I, I thought you stop. loved me. I you just... said you loved me. I'm sorry. I need help, I guess. So if you would have a choice right now, Matt, between you're really gonna your need girlfriend help when you get home, I promise. that you just had at the bar or your wife right behind me of three years, and you had to make a decision. Meaning with sex I, compared I, to, you know, a life I of wish love. I could afford Dr. Drew and get help for sex edition. Do you love me? I, do you still love me? I mean, what? What do you want? Do you want to You let, you so, let me have so the with your what, girlfriend. What That's you, what what I want. you need to make a choice, though, man, right now. Like, right here now. You said that you, you didn't want that. Go back with your wife. I need to, I can't stop right now. I need help, I guess. I, I can't, I feel yeah. trapped. I can't I need, believe you did this. So I need help. So, so from what I understand, man, why did you do this? You, you feel like a trap. Well, she, she knew I used to do it, and then we, we had these threesomes with her friends. I, I didn't think. She, I mean, she's supposed to be out of town. Oh, I'm supposed to be out of town. So that makes it okay, huh? Well, she's not my wife yet. I, I just figured when I did get married, I'd stop. So you're engaged, so that makes it. Yeah, I'm, supposed it I'm supposed to be out of town. I'm supposed to be out of town. Yes. So that makes it okay. Yes. What? Get away, get away, get away. Get away. How are you doing right now, Jennifer? I can't believe he, he can't even answer me if he loves me. I know, I asked him to make a choice and he can't even make up his own he mind. He can't do it. He's just leaving. Remember a taxi when you need one. So what do you want to do right now? Do you want to just keep, do you want to get out of here? Yeah. It looks like he's made his final decision. I want to go. All right. Unbelievable. You want your ring? You, you better, better ring? get over this. You want your ring? You better get here. over this. No, here. I paid for it. You didn't pay for everything. You didn't pay for everything, huh? Huh? I'm going home. All right? You can't come home. Don't even try. I'll call the police. After the confrontation, a frustrated Jennifer tries to make sense of the suspect's actions. At the end of the show, Cheaters lets you in on her thoughts. But first, Cheaters welcomes back Markel Weber. Markel returns to give us an update on how his life has been altered since busting his boyfriend lip-syncing to another man's tune. I knew that going into this, it was going to be something really bad. Um, and once I opened up the door and just saw them dancing around singing, I mean, I literally just flipped and I just, I couldn't control myself. I just had to just go after him. I don't take anything back. He deserved every last one of it. I hope he's watching this now. Uh, you deserve every last bit of that. You stupid bitch! Hey man, what's your name? I'm Clark Gable with Cheaters. Is this I don't keep in contact with Elton, but he did call to apologize and, you know, he never meant to hurt me. He, you know, he still loves me, want to get back with me. But by that time, I didn't really want to hear anything he had to say. I can care less for Elton. I mean, literally, I can leave from the store and I can see him get hit by a car and I would keep walking. How many has been? on your business. Call their ass up. Put them on shows, whatever show this is. This is Cheaters. 
That's the only reason why we're here is because he hired us to it. find you. Yes, I you did. did. Yes, you did. I ain't seen all you bitch. You just spit. I moved on. I am with somebody else. My relationship is going great. Um, I, I'm keeping it very private, but Cheaters is on speed dial. They're on my voicemail. I have them ready. I have the app. So anytime if something's going on, I would definitely be calling Cheaters because I'm not going to waste my time in, in a situation of me wondering what's going on. Following the chaotic confrontation, Jennifer Denis decides to distance herself from the suspect. Jennifer currently stays with family while she hunts for a place of her own. The suspect, Matt McGraw, seemed to be forthcoming in his version of events. Blaming Jennifer for instigating his rash of affairs, McGraw stated to cheaters, I love Jennifer, but she is so boring. The companion could not be reached for comfort. If you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why will both lose money? From Cheaters Surveillance Cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. Sit to my stomach. Is that him in the pants shirt right yes. there? Really? Yeah. Really? Best yeah. That's his girlfriend, girlfriend of baby a few mama. years. You told me you were single. Yeah. 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 Liar. Reality Television has brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Brandy Shaw is concerned that the father of her one-year-old spends too much time shooting hoops with his homies. Skeptical of his excuses, Brandy puts her foot down by calling our professionals to ferret out the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. He was very standoffish when I was pregnant. He was never really around much. It was. It seemed as if he don't. He doesn't think CJ's his baby. I'm not. I don't know where his head's at. Joey, age 24, a substitute teacher suspected of tutoring another woman in love lessons. While staking out the home the suspect shares with his mother, cheaters investigators spot the suspect as he steps out of the home carrying an extra set of clothes. He puts the bag and clothing into his car and drives off. A mobile unit tails him to a nearby park. Joey gets out and heads to the basketball court. He spends a short amount of time shooting hoops by himself. Less than an hour later, the suspect finishes his rather light workout. He gets back into his vehicle and the mobile unit goes back to work, tailing him. He arrives at an unknown apartment complex. Joey gets out taking the change of clothing with him and heads up the stairs to an unknown apartment. He has another baby with another woman, and I accepted that fact, and we're still together. So that was a big deal. That's a very big deal, so I'm very, you know, I'm still skeptical about that, and I don't know if he's messing with her still. I don't know what's going on. When I try to call him to spend time with us, it's usually always, he always has a tutoring class or He's going out with the boys. Like I said, it's always with the boys, it's always with the boys. Approximately an hour later, after having changed clothes, the suspect emerges, holding the hand of an unknown female. They get into his car and drive to a nearby Mexican restaurant. Joey and his lunch date grab a table on the patio. They converse as they eat. Shortly after finishing their meal, Joey whips his hat around apparently keeping the bill from getting into his way, and kisses his date. She responds passionately, wrapping her arms around his neck as they make out. He tells me he loves me, that his loyalty he's with me, is always gonna be with me, even though, you know, he has another child. But his actions don't show that. And I just think it, it just hurts just knowing that it's somebody that I've been with, you know, for so long and so much history with, you know, could doubt me or doubt his son or just doubt us, period. Sometime later, the suspect drives his companion back to her apartment. Joy escorts her upstairs 
A few hours later, the suspect leaves the woman's apartment. He hops into his vehicle and drives back to his mother's home, ending this day of surveillance. I mean, I love him. I love him with all my heart. That's the father of my child, but I can't continue to be the back burner to somebody or my son. I feel I'm I'm at I'm at the bottom of the barrel. I mean, definitely. I feel I feel six feet under. I feel alone. I feel by myself. And I'm tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of it. It hurts. I can't sleep at night. I cry. My son's always looking at me. You know, children feel the feed off your emotions. And he's he's not ever happy. He don't seem happy because his dad's not around. It just it hurts. Investigation day five. As befits his MO, the suspect comes out of the house, ball in hand, ready to head courtside. He pops into his car and is followed to the nearby basketball court. At some point during his lone workout, he receives a phone call. He stays on the phone a while, then takes off. Followed by the mobile unit, Joey drives directly to the apartment complex seen in previous surveillance. The suspect heads up the stairs to his companion's home. Sometime later, they come out and drive off, heading for a restaurant. As they get out of the car, the woman, now identified only as Tiara, wraps her arm around Joey in a familiar fashion. The suspect escorts her to the order window, where he fondly touches her backside. The doting duo discover an outside table to eat their meal. After satisfying their appetite, they return to Tiara's residence. She stays for a few minutes by the driver's side, saying her goodbyes with passionate kissing. Finally breaking loose, the companion makes her way to her apartment, while the suspect returns home. Investigation Day 7. Roughly an hour after sundown, the suspect is spotted exiting the house, heading to his car. True to form, he travels across town to his companion's apartment complex. Joey gets out, goes upstairs, and is greeted by Tiara with a hug and a kiss. Several hours later, both the suspect and his lady friend exit the building. At the lip of the stairs, they hug each other goodbye. The suspect gives her a lingering kiss before heading down to his car. With confirmation of the suspect's transgressions, Cheaters preps a package for Brandy's perusal. Coming up, the confrontation. Armed with proof of the suspect's double dealings, Cheaters contacts Brandy to reveal the evidence. Dismayed by the possibilities, Brandy stands firm in her conviction to know the truth. Brandy, first thing I want to say thank you for coming out today. I know you took time off work. Well, we've conducted our investigation and come up with some very interesting findings. Are you prepared to see that? All right. On this day of investigation, our detectives are outside. We see him at a park, basketball in his hand, start shooting some hoops. Sometime later, walks back to his vehicle and leaves. He then arrives at this unknown apartment complex, gets out of his vehicle with clothing. Sometime later, he emerges with this female. They get into his vehicle, they arrive at this restaurant. Our detectives then catch an internal shot of them sitting together, finishing some lunch. A few moments later, they walk back out, get into Joey's vehicle, and return to that same female's residence. We see them walking inside, hand in hand. A few hours later, he emerges and leaves. On this day of investigation, we are outside of his mother's house. Joey leaves, arrives at that same park, gets out of his vehicle, starts to shoot some hoops, and that's when we were able to record this phone call. I'm not trying to bug you, but I just, I don't know, I just feel like, I, I went by your mom's house again. I just feel like, you know, something's, you know, not right or whatever. Yeah, I just been busy, you know, I had my son today. Just been keeping me busy, went to the park earlier and stuff, so. Okay, then. You know what I'm saying? I've never st stared you wrong before. Brandy, obviously he's not playing basketball with his boys at the park and he's not with your son. Right. So after leaving the park, he really arrives at that same female's residence. A few moments pass and he comes out with that same woman 
They arrive at a restaurant. Oh, mm -mm. That's, that's when we see Joey putting his hand on her lower posterior. They then sit together, finish their meal. Sometime later, they return to the companion's residence. She leans in for a kiss. Joey shuts his car door, and she walks inside for the evening. Now listen, this is what I want to do. Let's get in the vans. I'll call the lead detective on the case and give us the location of where they're at, uh -huh. and then we'll go from there. Okay, please do. All Let's right. go. Right this way. Hey, Gomez, what's going on, man? All right, copy that. All right, thanks a lot, Gomez. I'll see you in a second. Bye. He went and picked her up. He's not in any form of basketball clothes. He's actually dressed. And they've been inside of this restaurant eating lunch together for, I'd say, 15 or 20 minutes. Is that him in the tan shirt yes, right there? Yes. Everybody out, everybody out. Everybody out. Go, 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 go. Really? 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 Do you know that's his girlfriend? What's going on? Hold on. Yeah, we've been talking for a couple months now. We met online. He told me he was single. He's not single. Oh, he's not single. So who is that? His that's girlfriend, his girlfriend of a few, years, a few he, years. And he does have a child with her. Yes. He has a child with her. Yes. You've been lying. Show me some proof you right now. You play basketball right now. Okay. Is this basketball? And I want him to meet up with and my girl. I ain't seen my girl since college. No, 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 no. This ain't got nothing to do with her. This ain't got nothing to do with her. This ain't got nothing to do with her. Who is this? This is my, this is my girl. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, you told me you ain't had no girl, and they're saying well, you got we going kids, through you hard got, times. You got a baby? We going through you hard times. You have a baby? No, I ain't got you no baby. You have a baby? I got a baby, oh, but not with her. Oh really? Yeah. But you told me okay. you didn't even have any kids. Okay. I told you I had a baby. I told you I had a boy. You told me you were single and you didn't have no kids, and then man, then see, this, see, no, nah, get all these really, cameras out my face. Get all these cameras out my face. Coming up next, the conclusion. Is that him in the tan shirt yes. right there? Really? Really? Basketball? That's his girlfriend, girlfriend of a few mama. years. You told me you were single and you didn't have no kids. This is an old yeah. college friend. And We've been kids. Chop it up. I ain't seen her. But he, 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 he been lying to me about it. He told me. He been lying to me about it. He told me. Who are you? Who are you? So, old college friends, they girlfriend. go out to dinner together. Oh, I saw that. Oh, really? Yes. Cool. You guys. Oh, really? You know. Really? Hey, this ain't got nothing really? to do with really? her. Let me, really? let me talk to you over here. Come really? here. Come here. So let me get this. Hey, let me, watch out. Let me get this. Let me, let me get. Let me get this straight really quick. So this is just a. This is just a friend from college, correct? Yes, this is a friend comes from college. Okay, so we recently reconnected on Facebook. You recently reconnected on Facebook. Yes. And you took your friend from college out to lunch, correct? Yes. Okay, so I have you. Just to, just to catch up on. Just to catch up on conversation. No. Remember this phone call? I'm not trying to bug you, but I just. I don't know, I just feel like I'm, I'm now say I'm lying. Yeah, I remember that phone call. Cheese. So really. What, I really? remember that phone call. Wait, let's listen, let's listen really, really carefully right? here. All right, really? Let me at the same time, my heart is torn, you know? Yeah, go, yeah, go, go. You know what I'm saying? Go. You, you start all this trip. Man, no, 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 because you're a liar. You're Driving liar. by my mama's house and all that, that's not necessary. All you had to do was be that's honest. That's not that, All you that had to do was be away. honest. That pushes me away. Oh, you, you're okay. pushed away. Do you love this woman? Yes, I love her. So why would you tell her that you're going to go have lunch with your boy? I mean, dinner with your boys, when you leave because and go pick up this woman? So you're taking this woman home, but you love this woman and have a child with her. Yes, I love go her. Ahead, go, no, go, take, go take the girl home. Go take the girl home. Look, I ain't got time for this. Yeah, I ain't so got time for this. Go. I ain't got time for this. Come on. Oh my God. Think about it. You take this girl out. You don't tell her anything. You have random dinners. Because if I tell her I want to catch up with an old friend, how do you think that's going to go? So and I didn't know he had a girlfriend or a child. So that doesn't seem strange to you? That is strange but to me. That's why I mean, him needs to talk, but not in front of all these cameras. But at the same time, we I'm just catching up. You know, I'm going to let you know true, that true, eventually. We've been kicking and I told you I missed my period last month. So, you know, I mean, all of this, I mean, you already got a child and you got a girl. So I wait. Mean, so well, everything out in the open now, you know what I'm saying? She, she, you like have a I son said, like I with said, that woman. She, she, don't, she hasn't trusted me in a while. There's no loyalty. There's no trust there. The, the, this relationship is over. You know what I'm saying? It's because you don't communicate with her, Joey. No, no, no. We're gone. We're gone. We're gone. You're not going nowhere. 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 
You're not going nowhere. You don't even have to do all that, no. sweetie. You ain't going nowhere. Get out his car. Get out his car. No, he's taking me home. Get out his car. Girl, go catch the bus. He's taking me home. Go catch the bus. This ain't got nothing to do with her. Look, 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 look. This ain't got nothing to do with her. He's taking me home. He drove me here. He's taking me home. He drove me here. He's taking me home. You know how I feel about that. You know how I feel about that. You go do your thing. So she's a college roommate friend, correct? Is that correct? What's that? She's, a, fr she's a friend from college, right? Yeah, she's a friend from college. So didn't you say that you met him online? Yeah. So who? Nothing but lies. No, 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 no. She didn't Nothing meet me online. We I mean, we connected online. Nothing but lies. Oh, so you met? He told me he was single. And I he was single was at the single. time. OK, so your college friends. We've been off and on for years, you know? So And if they're if supposed I'm to single, have a child, I'm that's single. the only problem I got with you. You, should, you could have told me you were with her, y'all had a child together, whatever. And you could have told her, me in the beginning that you really did have intercourse with her because I already know. But you decided to lie. And then lie again and lie and again. And that's, again. Wrong. And that's what's wrong. You she think, just you admitted it, man. Exactly. And she missed her period. And, and How do you know that. that's not a lie? And I seen, and I seen the Why footage. Why would she lie? Who's lying? The videos don't. The cell phone calls I'm don't. I'm not lying. You lying, sweetie? You lying, sweetie? So I'm lying. We had intercourse. She just saw the tape. Yeah, yeah, we had intercourse. We had intercourse. Yeah, you right. You right. Okay, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay. All right. Thank you, sir. We don't need to raise no kid if you can't trust me. But Joey, why would you even get it to this point? Why wouldn't you just tell the truth in the first place? None of us would even be here. First time. Hey, I'm not going to tell him. Hey, you better not push me. You better back up. Touch me, back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. One thing that should resonate in your mind is the truth will set you free, and until you do that, man, you're going to be trapped in these you types of situations. Where everybody, people take advantage. I learned that. Tell me, we out of here. Too good for that boy. Sure. Convinced of her boyfriend's puerile and callous behavior, Brandy takes some time to reassess her position. Stay tuned as we reveal how she proceeds. But first, Jeremy Huntley, the night manager in the Mallory case, comes to explain his side of the story about the time he was caught with another woman on Cheaters. We were just enjoying a drink. It was, it was a nice afternoon downtown. And uh, next thing I know, this whole crew of cameras just pops out of nowhere. It's probably the most shocking thing in my life. After the initial shock was over, it just kind of registered and I was like, Oh, this crazy girl. I, I knew something would, something like this would happen eventually. What's up? What the f doing, what is bro? This all about? Why are you what with her? This is my best friend. What the f are you, you doing? Kidding Seriously? Me right now? For real? Hey, hold on. What the, the, what the hell is this all about right now? I'm You're cheating. What the f are you doing? Why are you here? Why are you here? Seriously, what the f are you doing? And bitch, get the f away. You're supposed to be my best damn friend. You've been following me all the way here. It wasn't only me. Oh my god, this is bullshit. Right it is now. bullshit. What are you doing? Get the hell out of here, I'm leaving. Uh, the next day after the confrontation, I ended up moving out of the apartment. She actually had some of my stuff waiting for me at the door, and then other stuff, like my TV and things that she was a part of when we purchased, that she wasn't just gonna part with. So there was a lot of drama. Why you gotta walk away like a pussy? Huh? Get the f out of here, all right? That's enough. Stupid. It was enough for you to I did what you did. You should have, bitch, don't. Touch me. Hey, don't. Hey, touch hey, me. hey, hey, excuse me. Come on. Yes, yes, sir. We'll be out of here. We'll be out of here. No, you'd be out of here now, okay? <laughs> so, Jeremy, you have nothing to say to your girlfriend? You have nothing to say to me. Nothing to say? What huh? There, what is there to say? Sorry, what is there to say to you? Why the f wouldn't you talk to me before and say you said it my best friend, huh? Well, Jen and I are basically stronger than we ever been. We moved in together to one bedroom apartment. Every day, we try to spend a little bit more time together and just talk, and that's something I, I hadn't had for a long time. I mean, probably, you know, three or four years of just, you know, in and out, just missing each other, not telling each other about our days, and, you know, that's something that I've got now, and that's something that I've always wanted in a relationship, and I think that every guy does. After all that's occurred, Brandy Shaw is no longer with the suspect. After reevaluating the situation, she feels justified in asking for child support, albeit from a man who acts like a child himself. 
The suspect continues to claim that Brandy's child is not his. He is no longer seeing Brandy, nor the companion. The companion, Tiara, embarrassed by the events of the night, claims, I don't know what he was thinking about. Not telling me he had a child. Not telling me he had a girlfriend. She's no longer seeing the suspect and wants nothing more to do with him.